So, I'm with Campbell here, and we are planning for our big PD yeah. on Monday, which we're super excited. And Campbell was telling me she has got a new outfit, and I can't wait because I probably need to go shopping now. So, get me a new outfit too. So, we are working on some book snaps for teachers here in our district, Auburn Washburn. And Campbell here, she is a book snaps expert. So tell tell my YouTube channel what you think about book snaps so far. Well, book snaps are kind of cool because it's a way that you can express creativity through a book. Like you can put your own view on how you think about this character or how you think about this certain part of the story. Yeah. So Campbell is going to try to influence teachers. Some teachers here have not used book snaps yet. So she yeah. is going to be sharing with them how to use them in Google Slides. We'll be taking some video clips of that later mm -hmm. yes. and make sure that we include all of you guys so you can learn from her expertise yeah. as well. My co-pilot, Campbell, a fourth grader here in our district, led the teachers through how to create book snaps in Google Slides. You will see a few clips of her leading teachers, and then afterward, I will walk you through slide by slide how to create book snaps in Google Slides. You can take a picture. You might have to allow the camera. So you need to, you're gonna take a picture of this little picture right here. And then you can also, once you've inserted that, take a picture of the text as well. that you can do is to insert an image from the web. So you're going to go to insert, image, and search the web. From there, you can type emoji in the emotion, or you can type cartoon in the emotion. And you can get the cartoon characters, or you can get the emojis. Because again, we are going to give you some time to work on this app. Okay, so my name is Tara Martin, and I will be sharing with you today how to create book snaps in Google Slides. Book snaps is a digital visual representation of your learning, and it can be used for any subject. I will be showing you with reading material. It could be science snaps, math snaps, social studies snaps. It doesn't matter as long as you're allowing students to share their thinking in a digital visual way. We are going to use the app Google Slides today, but if you ever want to try other resources, you can go to TaraMMartin.com, and on the left-hand column, you can see all things book snaps, how-to videos, infographics, using many different apps to create them, also student examples, and how to share them in storytelling fashion. This is a think sheet made by Erica Flores, a fourth grade teacher at Farley Elementary. She uses this with her students to help them think about the snap that they want to create and why did they choose this passage and how did it make them feel. I love this think sheet because it doesn't put kids in a box. If we make book snaps like a digital worksheet, it won't be exciting and fun and you really won't get the most authentic work from your students. But when it is something very open-ended like this, I love it because it allows their creativity. It also allows them to connect to, a t to the text in a way that's meaningful for them. Today I'll be showing you how to create book snaps in Google Slides. There is an infographic on my website with a, that's a bookmark. That, so here are a few examples created by to my fourth grade co-presenter on February 12th day and I just absolutely loved having her join me and we all read the same text so at the end of the slideshow presentation I want to share with you how every single book snap looked different even though they all read the same exact text by Rick Jetter this is a book called the isolate in if you teach grades four through eight this is a fantastic book for teaching empathy it's about a little boy who had autism and how he navigates through the middle school years. So first I share with the students a link that gets them into the Google Slides show. And I typically already have a bunch of link slides prepared. Once they are in the slideshow, Google Slides, then I have them each choose a slide and put their name on it. Uh, this piece right here, before you get to this piece with students, you may have to do a little digital citizenship chat, heart-to-heart, -heart, 
with students reminding them that you know they are super responsible and there's no way they would ever get on someone else's slide, but they need to stay on theirs and not remove any um, objects or images from another person's slide. So I did have to have a few conversations like that when teaching students book snaps in Google Slides. If you're worried about that, you might have them create them in Google Drawing, which works exactly as far as the features, it works exactly like Google Slides. Once everyone has a slide, I'm just going to show you all the key features for creating a book snap. You would go to Insert Image in Camera. Here you'll have to allow the camera. If for some reason it's telling you to select a camera, you're going to need a call and, um, and get that fixed. Maybe put in an IT ticket. So then you will take a picture of the cover of the book. You want to make sure the author and the title of the book is um, visible. Then you can go to Insert Image Camera, and this time you're going to take a picture of the text, and you're going to make sure that you put that also in your book snap. To resize or crop, you'll go to the little crooked box, and it will give you the options to crop. If you drop down this arrow right here, you can crop in different shapes, so hearts, stars, any kind of shape. Kids often really like that. Now, to insert a pivot, picture from the web. This is where we will get our emojis or cartoon-like characters or any kind of image that we're thinking. Because when you are reading, comprehension is taking place in the left hemisphere of your brain. But when you engage the right hemisphere of your brain, the cre creative piece, you are now having both hemispheres of your brain engaged so that the chance of this content lodging into the long-term memory increases exponentially. And if for some reason the student is emotionally tied to the text, at the moment both hemispheres of their brain is engaged, the content could bypass the working memory and go straight to the long-term memory. So it's super important to allow students to represent their visualization that's happening in their mind with images. And this is how they can get some of these images. So you go to insert image, search from the web, and then over here, you would just type in, if they want emojis, I just have them type in the word emoji and then the emotion that they're feeling when they're reading. Sometimes they want cartoon characters. And for older students, bitmojis are appropriate. But sometimes for our elementary students, you could just type in cartoon and the emotion. And a lot of times you could find a cartoon looking character that fits it. But if you just want to type in bees or whatever the student is thinking, they can type in the word here and they will get Google images they can easily put right into their book snap. Now I'm going to show you how to create arrows so you can point to the part of the text that you're referring to. A lot of students like to do this. So insert shape arrows. And once you click the arrow, you kind of have to click into the open space of the slide and drag it to make the arrow show up. You can change the color of it by using the paint can. You can also put enter text box. I think for every book snap, a must have is that the title and the author are represented on here. I often put them in a text box too, just to make sure that we're giving credit where it's due. So insert text box, you just drag the box and double click inside of it to begin typing. Another piece of a book snap that I encourage students to do is to share what they're thinking when they're reading this piece of the text. So for this one, I would do insert shape call outs. And I use one of these think bubbles here at the bottom. If you click and drag, the think box will show up and you can double click inside of it to start typing. And this is where students can share like, wow, one time I was scared or whatever it is that they're thinking. I love the open-endedness of this, and I think this is how book snaps really speak to teachers and allow us to peek into the minds of our students while they're reading. You can change the font of these, any of the text by going up into, to the top of the screen in the drop-down arrow. If you can't find the font you like, go down to more fonts, and you can type there. Change the size. And then if you want to change your bubble to look differently, you can change the line width by clicking on the bubble and then changing the line width with these three lines. And then you can also change the color with the, with the pencil. <clears throat> 
Now, if you want to change the background color, a lot of students don't want a white slide. They want a black slide or they want a blue slide or whatever's ref whatever they're thinking about. So you can double click in this open space, actually right click, right click in the open space, change background, and then click the color that you would like your background to be, and then done. If you try to do this at the top of the slideshow, you will change everyone's slides. So you definitely want to be on your own slide, right click in the open space, and then choose it from that way. Now, some people like to put a box around the text that they're speaking of. So that would be where you insert shape and you get a rectangle. You will stretch your rectangle across the area of which you're thinking. It turns gray. So in order to make it transparent, you'll need to go to the paint can, change it to transparent, and then, <clears throat> and then you will be able to see your text underneath it. You can also change the line width to make it a little more bold and to highlight what you're really wanting the teacher to see. If you want to arrange, if some of your pictures get off and they are tucked behind something that's important, you can go to Arrange, Order, Bring to Front, Bring Backward. And so all of our participants read this one excerpt of The Isolate Inn, and it was in the Chapter 2, The Snow Queen. I would like you to pay attention to how every single book snap looks different, yet they were all sharing their comprehension. These are just a few examples. Pulled out some similes on this one. One of the great things about having it in a slideshow format is the next day when students walk into class, you could have music playing, have the slideshow rotating through, and have these images just going through on the slideshow presentation as kids are putting their backpacks away, getting settled in for morning work. And so it's a nice little review. Thank you so much for joining us. If you do share some book snaps in Google Slides, please do email me or send them out to Twitter, which is at Tara Martin EDU. Tag me. Also use the hashtag book snaps. And if you'd like to see more examples of book snaps used across over 16 countries now in the last year, you can look on Twitter at the hashtag book snaps. You can also look on Facebook at the hashtag book snaps or on Instagram. They are shared in all different places. So thank you so much and I appreciate your time. So Camel and I just presented book snaps. She did all of the sharing for teachers and how to create them in Google Slides. And she's going to tell us a little bit about what she thought about this whole experience. It was really fun because I got to dig deeper into book snaps, and I liked the and I liked that I was able to have the opportunity to be able to teach others. Awesome. So, do you have any advice for teachers who will be making book snaps in Google Slides that you'd like to share with them? Um, maybe just let them experiment. Like if, like if you're right there, maybe just let them, like if they're about to make a mistake, like changing all the slide colors let them experiment with that and let them make the mistakes so they can learn from that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Campbell. You are a rock star. Thank you for presenting with me today.